And here's a 5G, new 5G chipset right here with Qualcomm, the X55. So, hi, so who are you? I am Nitin Zeman, uh, product marketing for 5G modems at Qualcomm. And uh, this is a new launch? This is our, our latest uh, modem we announced last week. What I'm holding here is the world's most advanced modem that integrates 5G all the way back to 2G in a single chip. So this is the most advanced 5G chipset in the world? Yes. And uh, so how's it different from the X50? Uh, this, this integrates 5G all the way back to 2G, whereas X50 was a 5G modem. Uh, and it, this is built on a 7 nanometer process, so it's much uh, much smaller and uh, more power efficient than the X50. Which was X50 built is 10? 10 nanometers, correct. And uh, there's also something about the first generation 5G, the second generation 5G, what is it called? Is, uh... Uh, there's no second generation 5G, but we have second generation solutions for 5G. But how, how, what is that? It's basically our, our next lineup of modems for 5G. That's what we're yeah. calling this. But uh, does this support something that the X50 doesn't have, right? Some, other than it just 2G. There's a new implementation of the 5G that's more long uh, future proof, right? There are other, uh, other modes that it supports in addition to what X50 did. We introduced support for FDD, for example, and 5G standalone mode, which is key for some markets around the world. So this basically supports, you can call it any flavor of 5G under the sun is, is supported here. What is this FDD? Is it similar to what was in 4G? Uh, a similar concept. So most operators have a spectrum either in TDD or FDD. The FDD footprint around the world is for LTE was much bigger than TDD. Uh, with, with 5G, there are operators who've been waiting for FDD support so they can launch 5G services on their networks but with full support for TDD and FTD for 5G and 4G, it gives, up, gives maximum flexibility to oper for operators to launch 5G services. So uh, X55 is doing FDD, which is most uh, popular on 4G. Is it also gonna be more popular on 5G or nobody knows yet? Uh, it depends. So the other thing we've enabled with the X55 is something called uh, 5G, 4G spectrum sharing. What that means is they can operators can use existing spectrum that they have, which happens to be mostly FTD, and they can re use the same spectrum to deploy 5G. Ah. So all the guys that are doing FDD, which is all of Europe and uh, most of China, or a lot of China and uh, Asia. There's very little China on FTD, but most of the world is uh, uses FTD ex extensively. Most of the world. And how about? Um, uh, T-Mobile, which one is that? AT&T and T-Mobile, they have the GSM. The other ones are doing the G uh, CDMA. Is that something to do with that? Uh, Verizon no. and uh, Sprint, is, so, is that uh, something a, to do? Yeah, so AT&T and Verizon will have both spectrum. Most operators have both in the US, but T-Mobile specifically for 5G, they were they're, uh, they're expecting to launch on on FTD, so this solution helps them get there too. This solution is crucial. Yes. And you haven't announced uh, any SOC that has a modem built in, right? So we, we did. Uh, yes, yesterday we announced an integrated SOC with, with, uh, with 5G modem support. So it's not the 855? We haven't announced which product. It, it's not the 855. It's, it's a separate SOC. And you announced it's 7 nanometers, I guess? We do not uh, we disclose that. But, uh, so it's just called the uh, all-in-one SOC 5G solution. At this point, yes. Uh, so the extent of the announcement was that we have an integrated solution, and Samsung was also uh, partnered with us, and they uh, came up on stage and mentioned that they will launch a device with that integrated SOC sometime soon. Is this, this going to take a little while? There's 5G coming now. You have a whole bunch of partners. They all on X50 right now. Yes. And. Um, this one is going to take a little bit longer, right? The, how soon is this one coming? Slightly longer, but not that too long. Yeah. Uh, it's already sampling to customers, and we're expecting uh, commercial device launches uh, in the second half of this year. So it's coming fast. It's coming fast. So maybe no device before the end of the year, maybe, right? Like and, and like finalized uh, mass production devices, potentially. No, definitely devices before the end of the year. Before, before the end of the year? Correct. Maybe uh, for Christmas? I think it should be well before Christmas because uh, because of uh, the, the areas I talked about, FTD support and standalone support that enables operators in different markets to come up with devices and we should see that within 2019. So on the stage, I saw, I think his name is Cristiano Alon, yes. right? President? Yes. And uh, he said that uh, Qualcomm did a huge work 
with all the partners, but to get it one year sooner. Yes. Right? And that, so can you explain a little bit uh, the challenge of that? Did you want this? So the, the challenge getting there? Yeah, so how did you get sooner than... How did you do it one year faster? Uh, without we, doing FDD, what's it called? Uh, GDPF. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, we didn't have to rely on one particular mode to roll out 5G. A lot of the leading operators were looking at TDD and millimeter wave, because that's where uh, that's where we focused on launching initially. And the way we pushed it, accelerated this, is to push standard bodies to complete the standards back in, I believe, 2018. And then uh, we work with all operators around the world and all major operators as well as uh, infrastructure vendors to make sure 5G is available and implemented on their systems ahead of time before what they were planning previously. Uh, and uh, what is the power consumption difference between a separate modem and a built-in SOC? Is there any numbers on that? We don't. I don't have any numbers for that. But previously, I, I'm just guessing here. Maybe it's 20, 30 percent improvement in the power consumption, something like that, right? Is that is one of the main differentiators of data in the industry is that you have the SOC, everything in one SOC. Integrated, integrated, then then sure, it's, it's one of the differentiators, yeah, for sure. But uh, the SOC might not apply to all applications. It's, it's critical for smartphones, for example. But the X55 that we announced basically works across multiple segments. It's not just for smartphones. It goes into fixed wireless, into laptops and PCs, uh, connected cars, VR headsets, and so on. So it's meant for multiple segments, and uh, so that's why it's a, it's a discrete modem. And if we look at here, this demo you have here, uh, is that X55 in this? At the end of the day, no, this particular device the is demoing will here base is based on X50. X50? Uh, yeah. And uh, this, I can see 2.7 gigabits. Correct. Um, is there any gigabit difference between X50 and X55? With X55, we enable higher throughputs. It goes up to 7 gigabits per second. And previously in X50, we had limited it to about 5 gigabits per second. So there is a 25 something percent bump. Uh, 30 percent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's cool. It sounds, pretty, it sounds like a lot of bandwidth. Let's say we're here in a trade show, everybody's using 5G. Uh -huh. What can we expect? Like, um, it's much better use of, ba of spectrum than the 4G, is it? Uh, yeah, so uh, in millimeter wave, you're allowed to, it gives you room for more spectrum, uh, more wider bandwidth. That was the whole, uh, the, the main driver of moving up to millimeter wave. Uh, so supporting up to 800 megahertz, which is unheard of in lower frequencies. So that's one of the, one of the advantages of moving into millimeter wave in 5G. 800 megahertz? Correct. So that's the one that goes through the walls better, goes further away? No, uh, uh, 800 megahertz is the bandwidth. The frequency band is up to, is around uh, 28 gigahertz to 39 gigahertz. And uh, so that means that's a huge work for the carriers to get support for this, but they're all doing it? They're all doing, making sure that this is gonna work? Before the end of the year? Absolutely, yeah. So operators are already launching millimeter wave uh, services. They've already started in the US. So the groundwork has already been done as a matter of rolling it out at a larger scale. How's the difference? Uh, what if you just upgrade the towers they already have and put 5G compared to doing a proper 5G? You need much, many more towers, you know? You need to do smaller networks for the optimal 5G or you just use the existing infrastructure and upgrade the kind of like the base, the base stations? You can add 5G on top of existing cell sites, which is the first things that uh, operators will do. And then to get better coverage in, in spotty areas, they can add small cells, for example, or densify the network further. So you'll have products to enable those small cells, or other companies will do? Uh, we Well, we, we do sell chips into small cells as well. They're on demonstration let's, back let's, here. Let's go just quickly but, uh, around. Yeah. Uh, we just announced our fixed wireless uh, platform yeah. as well. I'm not the small cell expert, but there's a bunch of small cells on that wall over there. Ah, it's like uh, stuff that people can put inside their homes even to correct to make a little yes. little hotspot that can go down in the street. Correct. I can go improve the network. And uh, can we just walk over there? One second. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, just, just for, just for one second. Uh, are these the small cells? No, here are the small here? cells. Yeah, the uh, Wi-Fi is there. Yeah. Small cells right here. Uh, let's, let's just do a walk. There's a lot of 5G stuff going on over here.
Uh, could, could you give me a quick overview of what you're talking about around here? I'm actually not fully familiar with yeah. all that. I haven't had is, a chance to go around myself. Is it mostly infrastructure stuff or? Uh, no. So actually, I can introduce you yeah. to some of the guys. Yeah. This is basically the future of 5G. What you saw on the other side is commercialization and products yeah. that are out today already. Yeah. Uh, this is more about what's next in 5G, uh, for, especially for 2016. So I think here we're talking about a massive MIMO over the air network that we have at Qualcomm for testing uh, 5G. Uh, this is again, uh, I'm not sure what they're showing here. Uh, let's see. So lots of different uh, implementations around here and uh, 5G. And, uh, and here you have uh, here you have all your partners. Uh, this this Oppo. Yeah, this is the exciting part of our MWC presence this year, right? A lot of focus on uh, enabling our partners to launch 5G products and services. So we, we, there's been a lot of anticipation on 5G and is it going to be real? We've been saying for a while that 2019 will be the year where you'll see a massive amount of uh, devices coming out. So here we're showcasing, or we have partners here on our booth showcasing their upcoming devices on 5G on, and we're showing them live on 5G networks. So we have Oppo, I believe there's one, one plus on the other side. We've got LG, Sony, ZTE uh, as well. So a lot of ecosystem activity going on and it's, it's all happening here.